Robin Good whatever, like we always seem to talk about at the beginning of the show, because we don't know what time of day it is that you're or night. It, and we don't know what you're wearing either. So, <laughs> That's okay. I mean, too. it could be anything. We have no problem with that. It's okay. So this week we want to talk a little bit about nitrogen, and yes. the really fun part of that is it has a really cool symbol mm -hmm. that you can see here. And what's really good if you're a Scrabble player, for some reason they even tell you how many points oh, you were yeah. going to get with Scrabble. So you get seven points. How cool is that? It's a seven point word. I so never knew what those. I were thought for. that was kind of fun. So if you're really good about wow. science, you'll understand that it's nitrogen to the seventh, and you understand all of that great stuff. So never was very good in in uh, what was that? Uh, I'm not even sure what class that would have been in. So. Anyway, Who knows? I never would have science. known if you hadn't said you weren't good at so it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what nitrogen does for your mm -hmm. car, putting it in your tires, and then what not not nitrous oxide. So oh, we're okay. not going to talk about nitrous oxide, and oh, that has a little bit to do okay. with going to the dentist. That's that fun gas that you put on. And so, so, yeah. That's the only reason I came back here. <laughs> you heard so me. So we're not getting the gas? <laughs> Hopefully we're going to get a little bit of gas. Oh, so man. as we try and explain it, we'll even take it to its extreme here. So we actually brought... We brought Dave Walker's family tree. Yeah, so you see, this is, um, right here you have your, your medium chain uh, triglycerides. I like that. And, uh, now, is the, that a chain like a 7-Eleven store no, or a chain no, on a bicycle? No, no, no. See, see how they, they connect together with the, uh, the covalent bonds of, the, uh, of, <laughs> of the, the positive and the negative, the ionization. Uh, you, you really with, have no idea what you're saying, do you? Well, no, I don't. <laughs> it was going it well for a good, minute. Though. It sounded really good. I'm still admit. just upset that I'm not getting... I, I thought I was getting the mask. I, both of us. So I'll tell you. Yeah, but, you know, there's the mask. Okay, oh, cool. so good. You know, right. what is this? You know that Ryan Street, our president's son, is a dentist. Yes. And he can get you set up with the gas, but <laughs> only for a proper dental-related uh, reason, not just for fun, I found out. I asked. Go ahead and just say, man, this tooth is killing me, Doc. Yeah. Can, can you just do something for me? Speaking of relatives of Joe Street and the Street oh. Auto Group or whatever, part of our subject today takes us all the way back to when nitrogen first started getting put in cars. Right. It and has a, to be a relative. Tell us about that. A lot of people don't know that Joe Street's mm -hmm. Great, 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 great grandfather uh, was the first man to put nitrogen in the wheels of a carriage. Now, it his name is Joe Cobblestone. Cobblestones. Can you see? Cobble Cobblestone. Cobblestones. Yeah, they were yes. from Oklahoma. Right, they were yeah, from the, Oklahoma. The Cobblestone were back east in Virginia, I think, or something like that. But right. the Cobblestones. Cobblestones. Stones, yes. It was, it was, Big stones. It was later anglicized to street. Street. It's a After, just, with, uh, it was easier. Right. It was so, much easier to yeah. spell and much smoother as well. Yes. Uh, they, they did have a problem keeping the nitrogen in the wagon wheel. The wood, uh, wood didn't hold well. No, it really didn't. So he was ahead of his time. Which is really brings you to a, a, a thing to think about. And part of the reason that nitrogen does so well in the tires is that it's a little thicker, a little heavier than just oxygen. And the porousness of a rubber tire, the nitrogen seems to stay better right because the oxygen will just seep right through and as it does it will also oxidize the uh the metal uh, belts in your tires yep yeah. or rot and so it's it's yeah. just a great it's a great program you can read lots of different things of why to or why not to with the huge differences that we have in temperatures in amarillo texas we recordly can hit a 50 degree spread sure you know, we can have a 28 or 29 night with a 70 degree day well we've seen that just in the last few weeks mm -hmm. a 45 50 degree spread Absolutely. between the overnight low and the daytime so high what happens is if you're sitting on just normal oxygen or just air that's been pumped into the tire the shrinkage is going to really be big you're going to get up in the morning and what's on your tire pressure warning light, yeah. which uh, looks like a little a little cauldron. It's supposed to look like a tire that's pooched out on the sides with an exclamation point in the middle. It looks like a little cauldron with some stuff bubbling in it, you know. And it, it's always disheartening. You know, you start your day, oh no, it's on, and then you start to drive. The tire starts to get warm. The water molecules that are in the oxygen, they heat up, they grow. Hey, well, it went off, so it must be okay. Now, what happens? Here it comes back the next day. It becomes very frustrating. So at the Street Auto Group, as we sell our automobiles, we go ahead and change it out. We change it out to nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And we, we also sell it. It's twenty nine ninety five. If you, it's thirty nine ninety five. Thirty nine. It Men just went up ten dollars in the last three seconds. Yeah. yeah. Just mention Dave or John <laughs> and mention this this show, and they'll give it to you for twenty nine ninety five. 
Well, now that you've said it, we got to stand behind it, yep. right? Twenty nine ninety five. We'll get you taken care of. There you go. So, also remember, if you did purchase a vehicle from us and you've had a flat and you weren't able to come back in the store and let us repair it, then please come back by because they most likely didn't. There are a few of the bigger box retailers that do do nitrogen, but most don't. Just ask. If not, come by and we'll take care of it. We'll we'll vacuum it out, put it back in. So, right. Dave, you were explaining to me a little while ago. It's kind of a very interesting process to get it up in that 98% level. It is, and the machine that we use actually goes to at least 98% nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And to do that, the machine is totally self-regulating. So we just hook it up to your valve stem so, and it will suck all the air out of the tire. We actually do all five tires. All like five, five tires. Hoses. We even do the spare, it does it all at once. Right, for as long as you have those tires, mm -hmm. you're covered. So again, like John said, if you, if you come back and you had a flat and you had to just air it up with air, while you were out of town or something like that, you just bring it back to us, we'll set it up. But the machine will actually cycle three or four times. So it, it sucks all the air out, pumps it back up, sucks it up, pumps it up. And each time it's removing more and more oxygen and replacing it with nitrogen so that you end up at at least 98%. Yeah, the air that we breathe is about 78% to 79% oxygen, uh, nitrogen, nitrogen as it already, is, yeah. and 21% oxygen. And it's that oxygen that holds those water molecules. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we want to we want to try to eliminate out of there. And we don't want that light to come on for you. Nobody wants to see that. We want it to do what it's supposed to. You've right. hit a nail, you're losing air, the light came on, it took care of it. One of the worst things you can do is once that tire's flat, if you keep driving on it, you'll, you'll actually chew up the sidewalls in most cases. And then we yeah. don't have a choice but to sell you a tire, which is not what we want to do. Right. And I the problem, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Sorry, John. The problem is that most people get so accustomed to seeing that light come on just with temperature changes that they ignore it when uh -huh. something actually does happen. And like you said, they're riding around with not enough air pressure, messing up their sidewalls, and then you end up actually blowing out the sidewall while right. you're going down the road. And then your tire just flies off all over the road, and it's not cool. Yeah, summertime is real important because heat is a big thing. Mm -hmm. The tire does not need to get that hot. It, 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 it's rubber. It's just going to expand. It's kind of like what you've got right, here. Right. And at some point, if we put enough pressure on that, we put enough heat, it will explode. So Where's the heating plate we were going to put this on? Yeah, that's a good thing. We could demonstrate. So, one of the other elements we want to talk about is that some people even try to even put uh, helium you know, right, in, in their right. uh, in their deals. And, and they, they thought that that would improve gas mileage by making the car lighter. Let's see if I can get this balloon. I didn't want it to float away, so I had it stashed under the table. We had me worried there for a minute. I just wasn't sure exactly what we, what we uh, were doing. So. But we found that it caused other problems because, you know, people want their, uh, their exhaust note to sound, uh, you know, thick and beefy and all that. What the heck just happened? Give me that other balloon. <laughs> That's exactly what, what happens, happens if you put too much heat, you know, and you don't yeah, keep your yeah. nitrogen. So you have, you have uh, your exhaust on all blub, 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 blub. And then you get some helium that going on. That was blub, 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 blub. And everybody's car just sounded really wussy going down the road. Well, nobody liked that, so they quit putting helium in tires a long time ago, and they stopped using it for their YouTube videos, too, because how ridiculous do I sound right now? Actually, you sound pretty good. So. Really? Yeah. You like that? Okay. Next week, we'll be doing Disney characters. Yeah, so. we'll try. Oh, we're, next we're, time, it already wore off. Next time, we'll we'll suck some helium, and we'll have a sing-along. <laughs> I It'll like that. It'll be fun. That would be a lot of fun. We'll sing so. Sweet Caroline or something like that. One of the other advantages of, of nitrogen, the reason we're talking about the show today, is that that good, constant, even tire pressure does a couple of things. One, it makes the tires all wear evenly. You also want to come in every 5,000 miles and have your tires rotated. So, right. and, and at that time, we'll check and make sure your pressures are good and try and help you along with that. But and all that, the Toyota vehicles, we're doing a 10,000-mile oil change with a couple of exceptions like the Tundra. Yeah. yeah, so most of the time you're doing a 10,000-mile mm -hmm. oil change, but it's still so important to come in at 5,000 to rotate those tires because if you're in a front wheel drive vehicle and you don't rotate your tires we see it on trade-ins all the time you got bald tires in the front brand new tires in That's the right. back uh, uh vice versa obviously if you have a, a rear wheel drive vehicle uh, but you just want to do that we check your pressures also if that light does come on you can always just swing by and we'll check your pressures make sure they're all up to spec and get you in and out right. and Bo both service minutes. drives at the street auto group we're, we're prepared for it we have it right at the main drive just whip in real quick tell us hey you know what i just had a light come on real quick just need a little air we just need to get it taken care of and yeah. blow. we'll get you knocked out with that great service that uh, that we offer year round in all types of service issues sure. but uh we and you were telling me something really interesting earlier. Uh, where did where did nitrogen uh, 
tire fill really get started with cars? You know, it really, its roots go back with cars back into racing. And, and really, everybody was kind of doing it, but the drag racers were really big about it because they finally figured out that, that launching the car or that takeoff off the starting line, you wanted that tire just about exactly right. So they would put a certain amount of air in it, then they would go do those big, pretty burnouts with mm-hmm. all the smoke and all that. And that was to actually raise the temperature of the tire. Mm-hmm. And then so that when it launched, it would stay steady. But they, they were trying to guess all the time. They were, okay, if we go out at three and we heat it up real good and today's temperature being 96, the track temperature is 107. And you <laughs> tried to do all this crazy stuff that looked a lot like you're, you're doing you through a little while right, ago. Right, right. Yeah. And they were guessing. They learned that by really running very, very pure nitrogen, they could set it at three and know that when they really hyped it up, it might climb another degree. So between three and four, that was perfect. And they got that nice even launch yeah. in the car. One tire, you know, they wouldn't react evenly. One might have a lot more and the other doesn't. One tire is bigger than the other. Well, now like a wheelchair, you're gonna, something's wow. going right or left and now the car's out of control. Well, that's not so, good when you're going 170 miles an hour. Just zooming yeah. along, absolutely. So <laughs> great stuff. So if you have any questions and you want to know any more about nitrogen, you can call Dave, Dave or I, either one. The yeah. number will be on the bottom there. Call the stores. We'll be happy to talk to you about it. And uh, we hope you've learned something today about nitrogen and the reasons for it and why why we like it because we don't want your tire light coming on yeah. when it when it comes on we want it to come on because there's really a reason was that our top 10 for the i was day just or? making sure we had covered all of our <laughs> notes and uh, yeah yeah just letting so them go. sticking with that racing thing yes this is speed week speed week and we were talking about that daytona 500 the 58th running of it this year if you have never watched it most people don't realize that more people watch the daytona 500 it's called the Great American Race. In its early days, if you ever get a chance to see the footage, it's really spectacular because half of the track, excuse me, was on the beach and half was oh, on wow. asphalt. And you'll see them running right along the waves. You'll even see <laughs> in the early days, Fireball Roberts, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s father. Um, try to think of some of the other guys' names. Um, uh, Spank, uh, no, it was uh, uh, Eunuch. I think it was, yeah, it really was, <laughs> it was his name or whatever. Sparky Eunuch was okay. his name. But if you look up at those guys, if the, car, accident there. if the car was starting to heat or they have a problem, you would actually see them go into the water. <laughs> they would go into the ocean, throw water up in there, and then come back. But but watching those cars come from the dirt onto the asphalt <laughs> is something else. And then just about the time that all the dirt's come off the tire and it starts to handle better, zoom, you're back on the deal. Wow. But 58 years ago, the track was half asphalt. Some cobblestone, <laughs> as you mentioned earlier, back back to Joe right. Street's grandfather, back to the cobblestones. See, we tie all this together. It's We, we really work hard at this. It's all connected. Yeah. But if uh, if you get the chance, you want to watch it. Uh, Jeff Gordon has retired this year, and young Chase Elliott is in it. And he's taken over that car and actually is the first rookie, 21 years old, to sit on the pole for the Great American. Wow. So there's lots of great stories to go with it this week. The uh, Duels are tomorrow night at, uh, I think, 7 o'clock or something. They yeah. run two races. That makes the lineup. As you finish in the first race, you line up on the outside of the track. So it's one, three, five, seven, nine. It comes back. And as they finish in the second race, is three. It comes down the other side, and they line up straight back. Super fair, super great way to do it rather than qualifying wow. with one lap. This gives you 125 miles to do it. So I, wow. you know, if you don't know much about it, there's a lot to watch. But it's next Sunday at 2 o'clock. Should be a fabulous race. Only 40 cars this year. They've made some great changes to make great racing. So. But they're not driving on the beach anymore. I wish they would. So it would, I do it would put a whole new uh, new new element back into the track. I <laughs> Did old, uh, what, Spanky Eunuch was that? Did he ever end up with a dolphin in the car with I, him? I'm sure like they got, I'm sure fish in the grill and different crabs things. So. or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. would be perfect. <laughs> Driving so, a Corvette, get a Stingray on your Stingray. That's it. That's yeah. probably how I got its name, Stingray. So, that's very, <laughs> Down there very at Daytona. <laughs> very. Uh, anything can happen at Speed Week, I'll tell you yeah. what. Anything you can happen at the Street Auto Group. Yes. I was just sitting here listening that whole time because I don't know the first thing about racing. So I was just uh, listening to old Motor Mouth over here. <laughs> that's it. We love our, we love our cars. And we love our customers, Absolutely. as we always say. We thank, we thank Amarillo and the Panhandle and everybody that deals with us. And, and what's really been great is due to our great internet crew right now, as some of the people listening now, we've gone worldwide. Yeah. So we are really starting to ship cars everywhere. We offer you know the care, catch, uh, care catcher. Well, that too. <laughs> the car catcher. We do care. Yeah, we do care. But you can we go care. to any of our sites, jump onto car catcher, tell us what you're looking for. We'll find the car. We'll bring it into town. We'll do the freight. We'll get your financing. We'll take your trade. Mm-hmm. All those things that you... Is so difficult to do. You want to buy on the internet, but it's, well, what do I do with my trade? And, and how do I get license plates? And who's going to finance it? Right. I don't have a check. We do all that for you. So please don't forget that. 
contact any of us at any of the street auto group dave myself yeah. just call, call joe street if you want to yeah joe will get you with the right yeah. people and you know while we're talking about speed week why don't we talk about some of the fun to drive cars do we have a minute yeah let's take got, a minute and talk about that we've Absolutely. got some great cars we've got the golf r mm -hmm. over at street volkswagen that's all wheel drive uh, very near, very near 300, 300 horsepower, yeah. and yeah, uh, horsepower and torque numbers are both up in the 280s, 290s. Uh, All-wheel drive, excellent car. The GTI, of course, uh, very affordable. Uh, starts around 27 grand and uh, 258 pound-feet of torque, 210 horsepower. Uh, we have the Scion FRS over here at the a, Toyota store. One of my what favorites. There's a oh. couple of videos of me doing some neat track time on Absolutely. that, doing some racing. With spectacular the little rear wheel drive front engine oh. uh just the lowest center of gravity of any car you can buy every uh, magazine when that thing first came out every magazine gave it the same thing best bang for the buck by mm -hmm. far that car yeah. is 26 7 26 27 yeah uh, oh my depending gosh. on how you have it equipped and uh a couple of the reviews that i've read have said that you can't find anything with handling anywhere close to it for less than three times the price absolutely it is absolutely yeah. incredible so one of our um, employees old Flo, you know standing over there behind yeah. the cameras he drives one he yeah Flo often loves appears it to in death. our videos yeah yeah he loves it to death just awesome cars yeah and in fact jay uh jay leno drove it for his youtube series jay leno's garage he loved it and he talked about how much fun it is to get into a car that's not a five or six hundred horsepower car that a regular person can just kind of toss around on the streets and that that leads to how roomy that car is because if that chin <laughs> you, if you've ever seen jay's chin yeah that, that car's got some room and boy if that thing can get in there I've, you got lots of room to do whatever you need to do so. oh yeah so we do have got some a, really spectacular fun to drive cars future episodes we can talk about as we get more about it but i understand that toyota is going to bring the supra back yes yes that is amazing when i yes. when i was a kid you boys are a little too young to remember but if you had a <laughs> if you had a supra you were uh, you were pretty high stepping man. Oh, yeah. especially that you know 92 93 94 that twin yeah. turbo was a just an yeah. animal well what when a, i was, when I was <laughs> this is the difference between my background and john's when i was playing gran turismo on playstation back in 95 <laughs> we loved getting a super <laughs> and just uh souping it up but they stopped bringing them to the states in the uh, mid or later 90s 97 i think it was right around we, there we, we played pong yeah that was, was had two dials which for us was that was a big deal you had to turn two dials at once right now you watch these kids today with all the oh, thumbs and what's going on i don't know how you can days. do it so uh, okay. but yeah the super's coming back if you look at the ft1 concept mm. that toyota showed last year uh there are also some really interesting uh there's a smaller sports car a two-seater smaller than the frs uh that toyota has shown at some shows that might be coming around uh, and it'll be very affordable and just fun to drive like a little go-kart and then there's uh gosh the kikai is a weird looking little thing k-i-k-a-i -I. Oh, that's that. now we're now we're and we're, that's uh <laughs> we're back to scrabble <laughs> right that's, that that word probably carries what, probably 12 or 13 points you know? exactly exactly yeah. so the, Lots of fun stuff coming around. Talk about fun. Within the next six weeks or so, we should have the new Dune Beetle. Oh, wow. And we'll get, I think Flo has shown that in one of our other ones. That Dune is actually out of concept, finally. And what it is, it's <laughs> taking you back into the 70s. Every kid that I went to high school with, if you had a Beetle, you, you Duned it up. Yeah. You put the balloon tires on it, and you jacked it up a little bit, and you did the different things. This is coming back from the factory. Sits three inches higher. It's got these bigger tires and the wheel lip moldings absolutely the coolest car yeah and going to be in some blast. great colors yeah yeah just fun colors and we've got the denim the uh, actual denim beetle coming mm -hmm. it should be about two months behind it so got a, got a couple of things coming this year and we got a big suv coming a little further out and yeah so both both of our manufacturers right now have some great things coming our way yeah, and have great products now, but you know, there's right. no doubt. So. And we that's the great thing. I've said this before about Street Auto Group. We have the number one and number two automakers in the world, and they've actually traded places a couple of times. But we really do have the two best auto manufacturers that you can find, and you only have to come to one place. Yeah. So good reason that uh, we are talk so much about nitrogen and oil changes and everything else because <laughs> we do a lot of maintenance. We just don't yeah. do a lot of repair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if we had to live on repair, these are not the two manufacturers <laughs> that you want to own for repair. No, yeah, we don't get not. to fix a whole lot of our warranty claims, you know, kind uh, of in the tank. So 
We just build great products and we have great customers. Yes, and you talk about having fun and we have great employees. So we, we had we had an orientation today yeah, with some of our newer employees and just just had the best time. And it's so much fun to, to mentor and hire and see these people and see their eyes all bright eyed and everything. So we're going to cut it loose and we're going to say goodbye. Um, we thank you so much for being a part of Motormouth and following our podcast. As we say, Flo will run a number across the bottom here. Please call us. Do you have a question or if you'd like to be a guest on our show? Yeah. That could be really fun. If you've got a fun, you know, you were talking about vulcanized on tires and these these two over here got all excited and I can't do that. (laughs) I'm trying to, they were trying to hold their fingers. There we go. Trying to get their fingers all (laughs) folded. So here we go. So we love you guys. We love Amarillo. Thank you so much for being our customers and our friends. Come see see us.